Hi there, this is video 7.5. We are doing an analysis of Parabola. This one I chose to do a little bit different. Um, what I want to do is do each of the different ideas several times. And I'm hoping between what we did in the previous videos and what we did in this one, it's really going to cement what you have, your knowledge here. Okay, so I'm going to be scooting these around a little bit because I guess I should have made it just a teeny bit smaller. So let's wait a minute. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Okay. A little bit farther away. There. Perfect. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm so excited. I was smart enough to check that out. All right. So maximum or minimum? Well, minimum means as low as we can go. So if you again, you're reading left to right on your graph. So it goes down, 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 down to a minimum. Well, if that one's a minimum, guess what? This was that one. And I would suspect that would mean the other two must be maximum. So if we look, maybe if I use my ruler, it'd be clear. Oh, if we're going this way, maybe you're a little bug. Okay, I don't know. Okay, apparently you're a person. And you scroll up, you're going to go up, 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 and you're going to get to the top of the hill. That's your maximum. And then you go sliding down the other side. So that means this must be maximum. So all the time, guys. If it opens up, it's a minimum. If it opens down, it's maximum. Vertex. Vertex is where it changes direction. You know what? I suspect you should be able to pause this right now, do the whole thing, and turn it back on. Because I think you got this. Vertex is always a point. And it's going to be two and one. And, uh oh. Okay, uh oh, but not really. Sometimes your vertex is not going to be whole numbers. Most of the time it will be. 0.5, oh goodness, and okay, if that's four, it's okay. So marking wise, a question like this where it's clearly on where they intersect, if you don't have this, you don't get it right. On one like this, um, I'll give you a little bit more leeway, especially because now when I'm looking at how I draw, drew my line, which wasn't exactly straight, I might have said 0.6. But I'm guessing it's 0.5 and 0.5. So a little more, a little more leeway on those ones. All right. So here we've got a vertex is minus two and zero. And ah, this one's messy again. So it's minus three. And what do you think? 0.4. Oops. Negative 0 0.4. If you said 0.5, that's good too. Because I realized just after I made the x, now I made it hard to read. All right. Axis of symmetry. All right there. It crosses the x axis at 2. Crosses the x axis at 0 0.5. Press the x-axis at minus 2. You don't have to draw it in, but I like it anyway. And the last one. x-axis at minus 3. How are we doing? It's going well. Now we need to do our x-intercepts. I said this before, and you know what? I should just do it every time. There. All right, so where's it across the x-axis? This one? None. 
on this one. We've got negative one and zero, and we got two and zero. On this one, oh, this is cool. We only have one. It is minus two and zero. So your vertex and your x-intercept can be the same. Here's a good question for you. What is your parabola going to look like if the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts are all the same point? Email me. Tell me the answer to that. I'll give you some bonus marks. All right, this one, minus four, zero, minus two, one, zero. And there we go. Those are all the x-intercepts. So where they cross the x-axis. Now the y-intercept. Here's something that I do for you, which you may or may not notice. X-intercepts always has like an S. Sometimes I put brackets around it. Y-intercept, single, remember. Always, always just one. So this is zero and five. And this is zero and four. Remember the order. Y-axis well, is zero and... All right, it doesn't. Hope you can see that it doesn't go quite at the cross, so I'm going to say negative 0 0.8. And this one is 0 and 4. Now we got to do the range. All right. I'm going to cheat on this one. Whoops. That part should go into all these boxes. Sorry. That part should go into all these boxes. But if I try and write that, either I'm going to be writing it sideways or it's going to be messy and icky. So I'm just going to write you the middle part, the exciting part. So we've got a Y. Now, this is opening up. So that's a great thing. It's greater than or equal to. And our lowest point, our minimum, is at 1. And there we go. Okay. So we've got Y, our maximum point here. Okay, so again, we're going vertical all the time with the, with the range. It's the Y value, so it's vertical. So it's 4.5. And that's going to be less than or equal to. So for example, even if you look here, right, your y value is less than, both of those are less than 4.5. Even that one. See, so all of our y values here are less than 4.5. Even though that that's okay, you probably already know, but I have issues with less than and greater than sign, so I always double check. I'm kind of paranoid. Alright, so we got y here. And how high does it go is to zero, and it's always going to be less than or equal to zero because my y coordinates are going down from there. And then this is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 0 0.4. All right, if you were able to handle that, these are the slightly more difficult parts. I love the equation. I mean, this opens up, opens down, opens down, opens up. Concavity is like super easy. So I have faith in you guys. You should handle this. And I suspect you might get an assignment that has this, this, this kind of analysis on it. Do it right away. Don't leave it for a week. I've had students that leave it for three months and they're like, I don't remember how to do this. Well, do your assignments, hand in when you get them. Do your homework when you get it so much better. It'll help you remember. Yeah, basically it'll help you remember. That'll do. All right, enough ranting. Have a great day.